is missing also from the total nuclear extract. So at the protein level, there's a serious downregulation of this BAF 47 tumor suppressor subunit, and this is not true at the mRNA level. This is only true for the protein level, suggesting some sort of protein level regulation. If we perform the same game that we played on the previous slide, a density sedimentation would usually show a perfectly held together complex. But now if we look at insinovial sarcoma, we can appreciate a profound disruption to the integrity of the complex. Subunits are shifted all around. There's a much more of a spread. Uh, we can appreciate that the higher molecular weight fusion, the product of the oncogenic allele, incorporates and usurps these BAF complexes. <coughs> However, the product of the remaining wild type allele, SS18, is now present as a monomer outside the complex. So the oncogenic variant has somehow dominated and wins over the wild type allele. And BAF47 isn't there altogether. So this gradient looked quite strange to us and gave us this model for how this complex is coming together. The fusion incorporates dominantly, thereby displacing the product of the wild type allele and displacing and causing the degradation uh, of BAF47. So that's all observation in human cell lines. That's nice. What about some real experiments? So to that end, we, obtain, uh, we generated several different variants of SS18 and introduced these into fibroblasts. And we can appreciate from the uh, panel on the left that only upon introduction of this full fusion can we appreciate that BAF47 is completely missing from these complexes. This experiment is just performed 72 or so hours after uh, infection of these constructs into cells. But if we follow this time course out much longer, in a longer time course, we can appreciate that over time, BAF47 is ultimately degraded. And this is important because this suggests the order of events here is that first the fusion incorporates, and by virtue of that incorporation, there is some sort of steric interference or prevention of the assembly of BAF47. And like most protein complex subunits, if it cannot bind its target sequence, it is then degraded, uh, and we show this to be due to the proteasome. So, this is all biochemistry. It's been exciting to go back and look at actual patients, uh, sp patient specimens, FFPE samples of human synovial sarcoma. And we did this in collaboration with Jason, Jason Hornick at the Brigham Women's Hospital in Boston when I started my young lab. We can see here that with 100% specificity in a set of 120 uh, samples of synovial sarcoma, we can appreciate that BAF47, this INI1 staining, is diffusely low, weak to absent staining in the tumor cells and there's very nice positive controls of surrounding lymphocytes and endothelial cells in these tumors. And this pattern of diffusely weak staining of BAF47 is really quite unique. It's not seen, seen in any other sarcoma examined. This is a ubiquitously expressed protein. It should be in every cell. Uh, except for malignant redwood tumor where it's deleted. And again, in all of these tumors, the mRNA levels are not reduced, so it's purely a protein activity. So this has really become a nice additional biomarker for this disease. So thinking about therapeutically, we asked the question, can we force BAF complexes? Can you force a chromatin regulator to revert to its wild type counterpart, remembering that it has one copy of the wild type allele in these cells? And if we did that, would this impact cell proliferation? So, to that end, we generated a very nice inducible knockdown construct to the uh, fusion SS18-SSX. And we can see with a DOCS inducible time course here, uh, and capturing the complex with an anti berg IP, that over the time course we see a very nice time-dependent decrease in the two bands corresponding to the oncogenic fusion. And this is paired with an increase in the wild type SS18 as well as BAF47. So this taught us for the very first time that by just changing the stoichiometric balance of the, the concentrations of these two oncogenic versus wild type variants, we can toggle between the cancer causing form and the wild type form of these complexes. And this would give us a nice handle to try to study these and their effects uh, on the genome. So what else does it do when we toggle between these two forms? Well, knockdown of the oncogenic fusion, as would be expected, uh, rapidly attenuates proliferation of these cells uh, in culture, as does knockdown of Berg, the ATPase of the complex to which this fusion is bound. However, removal or knockdown of either of these components no longer part of the complex had absolutely no effect uh, on proliferation. So this shows us, also for the first time, that it's the residual complex, this renegade complex that now has oncogenic features that is the driver in this disease, and that should be the focus of attention for the development of therapeutics. So what are the consequences then of these oncogenic complexes? These are some newer mechanistic questions. And also, what is the basis for the allelic dominance uh, of, these, of, of this oncogenic fusion? So to take a break from the biochemistry for a second, these tumors have very interesting gene expression profiles in that they have high expression of stem cell genes, high expression of neural differentiation genes, 
and very high expression of genes that should be off, should be targeted by polycomb. Polycomb target genes are very highly expressed in these tumors. So to ask this question a bit more carefully, we determined whether, uh, whether or not introduction of different versions of SS18 into human fibroblasts would elicit any of these increases in gene expression that we see in human tumors. So in fibroblasts, a gene like SOX2 should be very heavily repressed by polycomb, that is well appreciated, uh, and is, is definitely held in the off state. However, only upon introduction of this full oncogenic fusion do we see robust increases